The NRL round two. It was a doozy, so let's get into it. What's going on guys, Bergs from The Casual Athlete here and I'm going to take you through every game from round two of the NRL, starting off with Thursday night's game with Penrith taking on the Rabbitohs. This was a closer one than I expected by the 80 minute mark. Honestly, Penrith still couldn't really score that many points. I thought their forward pack was quite good. James Fisher-Harris, Moses Leota. Uh, Sunir Taruva was outstanding in this game. He nearly ran for over 200 metres as well. Nathan Cleary and Luai, though, picked up an injury or two. I mean, we'll have to see what happens with that in the coming weeks. But, um, yeah, they got over the line. And, you know, credit to South Sydney, on the other hand. They stayed in this game. They kept trying. They didn't give up. And right to the 80th minute, they had a chance to score as well. But anyway, the Premiers got there in the end. And I guess that's just what champions do. They find a way to win. But keep an eye out for the Rabbitohs, as I don't think that they're going too far from the top of the ladder. Next up on Friday night, we had the Eels taking on the Sharks. And what a game of footy this was. Honestly, I was on the edge of my seat. The lead changed so much. Eels got up 10. Then the Sharks came back, made it 12-10, and it was just a topsy-turvy game. Absolutely ridiculous kind of footy, but I thought the Sharks showed real resolve in this game. They initially took the lead, and then Para took it back again, and, you know, it, it just it flowed so nicely, this game. There wasn't that many errors. I thought Gutho getting sent to the HIA bin uh, was a bit of an odd call. I think that... Um, you know, the Sharks took a lot from that. They managed to score a few points while Gutho was off the field, and he's a real leader on that team, really organizes the defense. And I think Wonga Blake and Cartwright struggled to, you know, hold their position in that defensive line. You know, Nakora burst through for a try, and then Will Kennedy burst through for his first as well. But, uh, yeah, Para, again, I'm starting to think that, you know, they leak 30 points at home, and, and this is their second home loss in a row. To start the season, it's not it's not ideal for a team that's had a very good home record over the last couple of years. But on the plus side, they you know they take on Manly next week. Manly have got a week off, so hoping that they're a little bit rusty on that. On the flip side, though, the Sharks credit to them. They did this without Nico Hines and Braden Trindle again was outstanding. Will Kennedy blew me away in this game. You know, three tries and absolutely torched. Parramatta uh, on the counter attacking in that spectacular try from a Ronaldo Militalo intercept. Uh, it, it was a phenomenal uh, bit of footy there, but uh, you know, all credit to the Sharks. Matt Moylan had a very good game as well, and um, I think the Sharks can you know hold their heads high in terms of they showed a lot of depth in that team. You know, a, a few guys out, Wade Graham out, Nico Hines out, and they managed to get the win. And you know, full credit to the Sharks. Next up, we have the Broncos taking on the Cowboys. Now, this was the later game on Friday night for those who didn't catch it, and all the talk was about Scott Drinkwater's high tackle on Corey Oates. Corey Oates is now out for about two months, and I expect Scott Drinkwater to spend a few weeks on the sideline for this one. As a Cowboys fan, it was unbelievable to watch that happen. It was just so stupid in my head. He didn't even make an attempt to, to make a tackle. And he came off second best. Like I just think that, you know, you hit someone in the jaw and you still get uh, run over the top of. But Scott's a better player than that and he's smarter than that. And I think he'll come away from this with a few lessons learnt and he can, you know, work them into his game. Maybe work on that tackling style, Scott, because it was pretty bad the other night. One thing I've got to say for this game, Reese Walsh, uh, he absolutely killed the Cowboys, especially during that 10-minute period that uh, Scott Drinkwater was off the field. They put on enough points to really you know, put the pressure back on the Cowboys, and that's all they needed to do. They needed to get ahead in this game, and we saw their game management the week before against Penrith uh, with Adam Reynolds at the helm. It was going to be too much for the Cowboys, and, and sadly... I knew that uh, with a guy like Adam Reynolds, you, you can't really give him a lead. Otherwise, he's not going to squander it. So, yeah, Cowboys back to the drawing board. Uh, they've got a few easy matchups coming up, so I expect a few wins in the coming weeks. As for the Broncos, uh, they've got an absolute superstar on their hands in, in Reese Walsh, and hopefully he can continue this kind of form because 
later in the season is when it's going to really matter. I don't worry about the Broncos getting wins in March. I worry about them getting wins in July, August, leading up to those finals. Hopefully they don't crumble. Next up, it was NRL Super Saturday for round two. And starting off was the Roosters up against the Warriors. The Roosters getting their first home game of the season. And the Warriors uh, showed some fight in this one. I think Adam Fanua Blake and Tohu Harris were a great one-two punch for the Warriors here. And they really kept them in the game. Uh, the Roosters, on the other hand, I didn't completely see the whole picture. I think... Again, Brandon Smith getting injured didn't help. And then, you know, it's one of those things where is Brandon, are we talking about Brandon Smith being a potential flop signing at this point in time? Because, you know, they're going into a period where if they don't have a hooker then and they've signed Brandon Smith on a lot of money, then it's looking pretty dire for the Roosters, a team that everyone had favoured to win the Premiership this year. So... Keep your eyes peeled on that space. Uh, I think for the Roosters, though, the positives can be taken from their outside backs. And their outside backs are absolutely phenomenal. Joey Manu coming back from an injury was phenomenal. Joseph Suwali'i as well just absolutely killed it in this game. Uh, you know, over 200 metres, you, you can't really uh, knock his performance as well. And uh, for me, was the MVP of this game by far. I still think that the combination between Sam Walker and Luke Keary isn't working as you know cleanly as everyone expected it to be because right now I'm seeing it as being Tedesco's team and I'm not really seeing that the halves are stepping up and making it their team you know I want Sam Walker to do that because he's going to be the halfback for them for the future as you would expect that to you know kind of eventuate but I think Kiri is still kind of holding on to those premierships that he won as well. So it's it's difficult to kind of work out at the moment. Uh, they're down a few forwards as well at this point in time. I think they really need some steel in the middle. And Jarry Hargraves is going to be good for that when he comes back. But, you know, full credit uh, goes to the Warriors for staying in this one. And, you know, I saw some vintage SJ again. Uh, Sean Johnson has surprised everyone with his form to start the year. And the Warriors have surprised everyone to start the year. So... You know, good on them, and I hope that they uh, can continue uh, some good form and not really shrink in, in those big games that we've seen. Next up on Super Saturday, we had the Dolphins taking on the Raiders, and the Dolphins got another victory. Fins up, as far as everyone's concerned. Uh, this was an extremely uh, wet game uh, up in Redcliffe at KO Stadium. Uh, the Raiders, again, have just you know bundled another one. I, I think that you know, they had the ascendancy going into the last, you know, 10 minutes. Uh, Sean O'Sullivan went off the field as well. It just got to a point where I think the Raiders kind of crumbled again. And, and then, you know, the Dolphins cracked them at the end. A great double pump from Isaiah Katoa straight to the hammer. And how good was the hammer in this game? He had over 150 metres, two tries. And, you know, he's really uh, leading from the back uh, at the Dolphins, he's, you know, taking those support runs. He's backing up his 5'8 and halfback at every turn and really looming up in support. He looks dangerous. And I'm kind of sad that the Cowboys let him go at this point in time because it's, it's looking pretty good for the Hammer. On the Raiders' side of things, they need to take a good hard look at themselves and figure out how they lost this game because I think that the Raiders, they've got an easy draw but it seems to be that they excel against the teams that they probably shouldn't beat and then are absolutely dreadful against the teams that they probably should beat. And I get the Roosters losing to the Dolphins because it's a tough thing to do. You know, go to Suncorp, 35,000 people turn up. <laughs> With the game against the Raiders, it's, you know, outdoors raining you probably don't expect people to be that loud they're probably shivering they're probably cold uh and the Dolphins fans still turned up and you know the Raiders weren't good enough to stop it so sticky you've got some work to do finishing off Super Saturday for round two it was the Storm versus the Bulldogs at Amy Park and wow the Bulldogs absolutely came out of the blocks on this one and blew the Storm away uh I just 
before I think the Storm even realised that they were playing a football game, it was 26-0. It was an absolute joke, as far as I'm concerned. They started playing football at like the 65th minute or something, you know, and Nelson Sofa solomon had crashed over, and now he's out for six to eight weeks as well. So that doesn't help the Storm at all in this case. So the Dogs, it all started with Jacob Carraz. Funnily enough, a winger really sparked the dogs into action because it wasn't Burton. Burton wasn't doing anything and it wasn't Flanagan either. So uh, I'm so impressed with the job that Jacob Carraz did and he proved that even being on the wing, you can turn a game and you can really turn it in your favour. He got them on the front foot. He was breaking tackles. He was making offloads. I just want to read out a stat to you guys. The Storm missed 49 tackles in this game. I don't think potentially ever that we've seen a Storm team come out and miss that many tackles. They were so weak through the middle and it just it just ex- exploded into this game of, you know, who are we going to pass the ball to next? And yeah, I'll give this guy that offload. And they weren't wrapping up the ball. I- I'm not sure if I feel for the Storm because they've had a lot of success in their, you know, their time, but I think they're going through a period that we haven't seen in potentially the last 15 to 20 years. They're going through a phase where they haven't got big stars playing for a long period of time. They haven't got those established, top-of-the-line talent NRL players. It's really a case of, do we go to the drawing board? Do we try to recruit someone, or do we try and develop? Tyron Wishart, for me, can't start at six again. You've got a good young player there in Jonah Pezzett. I think he needs to play. And, you know, just let them play a bit more free-flowing footy. Right now, the Storm aren't that team that grinds teams down to a halt and wins games off the back of their defense. They're a team that kind of need to throw the ball around a bit and see what sticks. As far as I'm concerned, the Dogs put in a great performance here, but let's hope we see that week to week. And for the Storm, they've got to check the weather and make sure it's not raining on their parade next week. NRL Round 2 Sunday games, and it was the Tigers taking on the Knights at Leichhardt Oval. And the Tigers, once again, managed to score very little points and managed to disappoint an entire fan base for the, what is it now, 12th year in a row. And I don't see it getting much better at this point. They're playing such frivolous attack. Like, it's super frustrating to watch, not only as a fan of the game, because I want to see the Tigers do well, but... I've got a couple of close mates who are Tigers fans and, you know, just to watch the frustration on their faces every week and, you know, discourage their own team. It's not something that you want to see, but I haven't really been through what they've been through. So uh, I'm sorry, boys, but uh, the Tigers, they need to sort out what's happening because these new signings haven't really worked as yet. I'm hearing that John Bateman is injured. I'm hearing that he's underweight. A lot of stuff's going on at the moment. Uh, I think the big story out of this one as well is that Kalen Ponga went down with another head injury. That's his fifth in the last 10 months. So uh, for Kalen Ponga owners in Fantasy and Supercoach, I feel your frustration because he's done it to me in the past. (laughs) Hopefully we see him come back, but I think it's going to be a bit more of an extended stay on the sidelines for Kalen Ponga. Jaden Braley also went down in this game with a head knock, and then also Tyson Frizzell got injured as well, and I'm so impressed with the effort that the Knights displayed, especially in the last 20 minutes of that game, because they could have let it slip. But they didn't. They stayed strong. Tyson Gamble was very good. I thought Jackson Hastings led the team around well, and Lockie Miller, again, was phenomenal. i got to give credit, though, to Dane Gagai playing his first game of the year. I thought he was outstanding, and his winger, Dom Young, as well was phenomenal. I think we can expect a few more good performances out of Dom Young. I'm thoroughly impressed with the Knights. I did not tip them in this game, but they came out uh, and didn't score too many points, but they got the job done. And I think for a team missing, for the most part of the second half, their three best players, I would say, Frizzell, Braley, and Ponga, to get a result and get the two points is an absolute win. And, you know, you've got to take that one to the bank. Last game on our NRL Round 2 recap, it is the Dragons taking on the Titans at Netstrata Jubilee Stadium. And what a game 
for the Dragons to come out and get their first proper win of the season after getting the two points against the bye last week. The Titans, I thought, were heavily favoured in this game. Not many people had the Dragons scoring as many points as they did. You know, they've put up 32, and Ravalawa was outstanding, and so was Ben Hunt. But I think the Titans, you know, they got out to a really good lead in this game and just couldn't hold it. Uh, The Dragons, they really came back. You know, they have those moments, the Dragons, where they can really, you know, switch on and switch off. I think we saw that late in the piece with Tino Fasuma Malawi uh, scoring a try uh, to make it uh, a bit of a close game for the last you know couple of minutes there. But you always thought you know with the Dragons though that five minutes, despite you know being uh, only fourteen points uh, ahead, that they could still potentially lose this game. But uh, I think Dragons fans will be pretty happy that they've started off the season with four points in the bag, and they're actually sitting second on the competition ladder at the moment. So, you know, fair play to Dragons. Uh, They absolutely killed it. And, you know, Ben Hunt is an absolute superstar. I'm glad that he re-signed with the club as well because I think he'll be a Dragon for the rest of his career at this point in time. For the Titans, AJ Brimson was quite good. I think they brought on Jaden Campbell a bit too late in this game. You know, he is kind of a game-changing guy, and, you know, to bring him on that late just didn't really give him that much time it kind of just said here you go Jaden we're down a lot of points let's try and do something it was a bit you know kind of a a nothing play as far as I'm concerned I think Jaden Campbell's a bit too good to be not starting at a team and to bring him on as the 14 when he's pretty much a fullback and that's it you know, kind of leaves a lot to be desired. I think Foran wasn't as good as he was last week. I think maybe that injury hampered him a little bit. David Fafita still had a pretty good game. He's always going to break tackles and run over 100 metres, especially if you can give him the ball. And I think Tanner Boyd had an absolute shocker in this game. He made errors from kicks. He wasn't as clinical as the week before. So, you know, that position could come into a bit of conjecture over the next couple of weeks. They do have Toby Sexton waiting in the wings as well. If they lose a couple of games, I think a lot of it could be placed on Tanner Boyd's shoulders because he's the one leading the team around. So the Dragons get the win in this one and they can breathe fire all night long as far as I'm concerned. Good on you, Dragons. Well done. Anyway, guys, that's our weekly wrap-up for round two. If you like this content and want to see more, make sure you give us a like and subscribe and let us know what you want us to cover down in the comments.